All right, looks like we're back for another oversized control installation. So this is a Winchester Super X4, and I think you would do the same thing for a lot of the new Browning Maxis. These have a rectangular oversized uh, button from the factory. It's actually pretty good, you know, compared to the small round button that's on like the Silver Super X3 and original Maxis. But there's, it, you know, there's still a little bit to be desired on this. Now, if you look toward the back, it kind of sits flush. And then the front looks like it's uh, protruding a little bit more. And it is. So one of the things I'll tell you. So you, you can go on and buy this button kit directly from Briley. Unfortunately, NDZ, uh, not NDZ, Nordic Components does not make a button kit like they do for the Silver, Super X3, etc. You have to do this installation yourself. One of the things I'll tell you is they give you no direction, okay? Uh, I spent all week trying to get a hold of them to ask them, how do you do this installation? Obviously, I can figure this out on my own, but I really just wanted that confirmation before I take this latch out, drill it, or whatever. Now... As for getting this button out, okay, this is easier than the S Browning Silver Super X 3, 4, uh, uh, 2, whatever. They're all the same, but this one's actually easier than them because in the 20 gauge, this, this latch is just one piece. Sorry, guys, the lighting is just so bad down here. I, the camera just won't pick it up, and I've got LED lights surrounding this area. So I had to bring out a spotlight so you could see it. So that slot right at the tip of my finger, it utilizes the same, the same uh, clip that retains it. So it goes in this way, the mouth of the clip goes in this way and you take it out to your right. So you push it in right to left, you take it out left to right. Um, getting the button out is very simple. It is just like you just go through that top hole, just like the silver or any of them. It's all the same. You just put some equal tension on the latch it's only one piece. I'm using a a uh, paper clip. So you just take the paper clip, push through the hole while holding equal tension on the button, and the pin will come out, and that groove is where that first clip retains it. So that's the pivot pin. The whole latch assembly will come out. And that's pretty much it. All right, so we got the latch out of the gun. This is pretty simple. Uh, compared to the silver, there's less moving parts and not an additional pivot pin. So you can see this one has the same urethane washer, same type of spring that sits on this post right here. So we're gonna put these parts to the side. You have this groove in here. They mill this slot, okay? And it's kind of like a picture frame, right? And then you have this stud. Now this makes sense because it's tapered and it needs to offset. So when you, know, you, you push this button in, this is really close to the receiver. If you use the regular flat button, you wouldn't even be able to open the latch. So I understand why they did it, but the issue is, is it doesn't fit between, between the groove. I'm trying to get the lighting here, just really struggling with, with lighting. Um, but it does not fit. You can see it's on an angle. So, if you recall in the beginning of the video, I showed that 
it's kind of comes like that through the receiver. So there's a high spot right here. So because they didn't get back to me, you know, this isn't rocket science, but I would have rather if somebody told me I'm going to just take it upon myself to make this work. But it looks like we're going to have to file, or if you have a mill, you're going to have to take off this raised portion and to get down to this flat surface here. All right, so what I'm going to do is use a Sharpie marker because I don't have any blue dicum left. And what I'm going to do is draw, this is, you know, I guess what you can call like poor man's dicum, but what we'll do is we will draw on the surface here let that dry so the purpose of this is as I'm taking this picture frame portion down I want the bottom to stay black okay I just want to take off what I need to take off before I even drill and tap so I'll work on that here in a second and I'll just take some like quick snippets of me working on it um, but this does require drilling and tapping they do give you an allen wrench and this uh, four millimeter screw a four by 0.70 tap so this is metric ended up picking this up at a gun show for two bucks nice craftsman smaller tap handle and then you'll need about a one eighth inch drill couple thousandths over, couple thousandths under will be okay for your final hole before you tap it. So let me get to filing this smooth and then we'll get back to uh, the next couple steps. All right, I'm gonna show you what I'm quick doing. I have to put my hand here to cover up because the light just reflects on the black and makes it look like I've made it farther. So what you do is you're just going to file this high spot off, okay? You don't treat a file like a saw, okay? It's one directional, it cuts in one direction. So you take, you take strokes like that. You can hear it taking metal off, okay? So if your dad didn't teach you how to use a file, I just taught you how to use one. All right, you can see I'm getting there. Got just a little bit more to go. What I want to do is take it all the way down that the entire surface is meeting that center, that center notch right in there. That's what we're trying to do is just get to that surface. Don't want to take off too much. All right, we're almost there. I'm just going to finish this up. All right, looks like we got it almost there. I'm going to finish this up on some fine grit sandpaper. All right, so I finished filing this smooth. Just kind of broke the edges with some thousand grit sandpaper and some CLP. I got it. There's a little bit of a grain in there, so it kind of looks like it's sitting down in the front, but it's flat as you can tell. So what I'm going to do is put some Sharpie marker on here again. And we need to find the need to find the center. So unfortunately this won't be as easy to this won't be as easy to drill because it's a solid piece. A lot of machining on this actually it's a solid chunk so I have to find the I'll find the center with my calipers what I'll do is I'll use the calipers the the tips are hardened so you can scratch the surface and that's how I'll find my center so let me find my center and then we'll we'll get over to the drill press all right so you can see that I found center like I said I just measured the width divided in half 
and then just scribe through the black ink. Now this isn't as strong as Dicom, so you can't just, it'll brush off with your fingers, but it is good enough to find center. And then I'm going to use a pin punch. To center punch it and then we'll go over to the drill press and start drilling all right so i've got a 330 seconds pilot drill and that's what we'll use to get started i'm going to use some some oil to help cut because there'll be a lot of chips to clear here since i'm going through uh, every bit of i would think three eighths quarter inch of uh, stainless steel here all right i'm going to turn the drill press on and get the drilling <laughs> so we're completely through now you really don't need to go all the way through because this screw won't go that far but honestly it's the best way to do it to get i don't have a bottoming tap for this situation all right let me get the eighth inch drill that's required to do the tapping all right i'm putting in the eighth inch drill tighten this down And you, you, you don't want to rush this type of thing. So make sure you just use plenty of oil. You're, you know, you're asking a lot of pretty small drill bits. So, all right, let's get started. <laughs> I don't know where this drill came from. It came out of a tool kit, um, like a, a lot of tools from an auction years ago. Man, that thing cut through that like butter. So let's get over to tapping. All right, so I'm going to put this tap, this tap handle, tighten it up, and we'll get to tapping this hole. So you can see it's pretty darn centered. You know, is it 100% perfect? Probably not, but it's probably 99. And that's good enough. So, so I, this would actually be your opportunity if you wanted a little bit forward or a little backward or something like that. Just keep in mind, there's a groove machined around the base that that urethane washer sits in to protect this from hitting the aluminum receiver. So just kind of keep that in mind. You might be asking, well, how did I drill this or, or keep it um, level to the surface? It's kind of simple. You, know, you just take the top jaws of your vise, whatever you're drilling in, and the base of the button is flat to the base that's milled around it. So kind of simple, actually. You don't, you don't have to go too crazy or overthink it. So just make sure you get plenty of uh, cutting oil on the tap. Like I said in the browning silver video, if you've never tapped a hole before, don't worry too much. So let me get started and then I'll be back. All right, so that final drill bit was an eighth of an inch and it even says on the tap that that's the drill to use in order to, um, you know, tap, run this four millimeter tap. Technically, if you go by metric, it's a little bit bigger, it's closer to I think 129 or 130, but that's okay. An eighth of an inch is, is fine. Now, because we're tapping so much, I'll be, you know, running the tap in 
clearing the chips. This is a really small hole. It's a, I believe, a stainless steel part. And I'm um, not going to ask too much of it. So I'll tap a little bit, clear my chips. You don't want to break a tap off. It's a, it's a terrible experience. You almost have to chip them and break them out or get a carbide bit. And honestly, in a, in a part of this cost, you'd be better off just buying a new latch and starting over probably if you can't get the tap out easily. So I'm feeling a decent amount of resistance. So I'm going to back the tap out and clear the chips. And I'll do this a couple more times until I'm finished. All right, looks like I made it all the way through. And like I said, you probably don't need to tap all the way through if you had a bottoming tap. That would be okay. You know, you could even just drill maybe two thirds of the way or something, but there's really no harm in doing it all the way. All right, so I tapped all the way through. We're gonna take this out, clean it up a little bit, and we'll see what it ends up looking like. All right, so you could see that that hole is tapped. And we'll do a, you can see there's some tiny little burrs because that hole is just slightly undersized before I tapped it, but that's okay. Like I said, you don't take your time. Make sure you use plenty of oil back out every, you know, half a turn, turn, turn and a half, something like that. You start feeling a lot of resistance. It's a small hole and it is a chunk of steel. All right, let's get the uh, Briley button kit out here. It's a lot of money for an Allen key piece of turned aluminum that's anodized and a button head screw so let's do a test fit here with the screw make sure everything make sure all is well all right threads in the back side threads in the front side so that's good it did the right size so you just put the allen screw through and that's that's real that's all that protrudes so it's not a lot it's almost worth replacing with something something a little bit longer but there is the button now you can see that little standoff and now it'll be able to clear the receiver. But I was saying about drilling all the way through, if you wanted to run like a headless set screw and you didn't want to use Loctite, you could actually run it through the backside and jam it against this one and you would never have to worry about it coming undone. You could just go to the hardware store and get one of those. I'll just use Loctite, but... All right, let's get to putting this in the receiver. All right, so we've got our modified latch. Stop. Started. All right, so we got our modified latch. It quick took a slightly larger drill bit and just kind of deburred these holes by hand. Nothing crazy. Just take the little edges off. All right, you put this spring on the post. Sticks on, sticks in place. This is much easier than the silver. You don't need to try to make like a makeshift slave pin. You just get it in place, just like you see there. You have to hold it, slide your slide your pin in, and you don't need to tap this in place. And make sure that you have the groove. Let me see if I can show you is the groove facing down, because that is exactly what the little keeper pin will hold in place. So let me get this pin completely in off camera and then we'll come back and stick that pin in. All right, so we got that pin. 
should be sitting below flush. And then the hardest part of this whole job is sliding in that groove right there to retain that pin. You can see the light just glaring off it. So this tiny little pin in my fat fingers, I've got to get that in there. So like I said, I had a hard time. I'll never be able to show it on camera, but it goes in right in that, right in the slot. Goes, goes right in this slot. So I'll put that in off camera and then uh, we'll be back to assemble the gun. All right, guys, so I actually used the paper clip once I got the clip in there. I used the paper clip because I could get it in there on an angle, and I just I just pushed it in. That was it, and you feel it click into place. All right, let's install the button. So I got some Loctite here, and the chapstick kind of looks like a chapstick uh, container. I just put a little bit on the on the threads you really only need it on the tip of the screw So I think I'm definitely going to replace this with a longer screw. Probably sent way too short of a screw, in my opinion. There's only maybe uh All right, so this screw is only about a turn and a half of threads. I think Briley sent way too short of a screw. This is probably the screw that comes with the silver button that sits flush. So I'm probably going to end up replacing this screw. So probably run to a hardware store later and get a longer screw. What a what a disaster this has been to install this button. But man, that looks good. Feels good. That's a way better, way better option than what it came with. Even though it, it, it wasn't terrible. You know, it's much better than the silver Super X3 or something like that. But not bad. Alright, let me put the rest of the gun together. Alright guys. That's the uh, installed button. You can see, sits proud to the surface. I could easily see you taking um, way more material off than I did to actuate the button if you wanted to. You know, if you, I just went to, like I said, a, a uh, flat surface on the stock button you know, I didn't get any directions and still haven't gotten a response back from Briley. So they don't have an install video. They don't give any instructions or anything like that. Um, so I'm not even sure, you know, what they do to install it. But so you can see that button is completely flat. And it's a lot easier to actuate. It looks sharp, too. The black grumpy duck duck band charging handle on there and that briley oversized button pretty nice like i said i think i'm definitely going to get a longer screw definitely think so but that's it hopefully it helps some people out anybody that's looking to add some extended controls to their waterfowl shotgun pretty nice setup makes makes this pretty nice affordable waterfowl shotgun even better it's my only 20 gauge foul gun all right i'll see you guys next week for some 12 gauge turkey loads may or may not be using a lee load all